The book of Job, verse 10 and 11. Did you not pour me out like milk and curdle me like cheese? Verse 11. Clothe me with skin and flesh and knit me, and knit me together with bones and sinews. Okay, so, hi everybody, this is Christian RPG Gamers. So, for today, I wanted to, I wanted to try doing something a little bit different than I normally do. So, I was thinking about it, and I'm, I'm, I'm probably gonna make, a, I'm I'll probably make a video completely, you know, like, I'll, I'll talk more about this in a different video, probably. Um... I wanted to try to do some, like, you know, like, tips and tricks style of videos. That's, that's, that's kind of the name I call it. So, like, maybe some... Like, you know, some kind of, like, a little... Um, like, a small guide, or, or some kind of, like, you know... Like, maybe beginner, intro, advanced level, or... Just some tips you could do to how, learn how to play the game better, or... Or stuff like that. So, this might be one of those kind of videos. Okay, um... So I think I'll talk about it a little bit with I'll, I'll, I'll try talking about it a little bit in this game for Doncaster. So this this might be a little bit of a rough draft. Now I was I was building one a little bit more in depth with uh, the Witcher Three. I was gonna go through some of the cut and dry for that one. Um. So yeah. Okay, so yeah, let's talk about some of the basics of this game. Okay, so... So to start with, you have these little daily uh, daily rewards you can get. So, every single day you'll get... If, if you complete one, you'll get removed, and you can re you can reload, you can re uh, re-roll one every day too. So these two here... Basically, any, on any difficulty, you have to beat the game with one of these classes. One of them is for the knight, one of them is for the arcanist. So if you beat okay, so if you beat that quest, you'll get the 50 uh, little gems. And the little gems help you to become stronger for the character. So, for example, you have the warrior. So you, you, you have to pay like you know, 15 or 20 money or something to unlock some of these. So yeah, like you, you can pay some extra gems, and you can pay some gems, and you can unlock special abilities that will help you get further along into the game. It, it presum presuming you're not playing on like story mode. Story mode's like it's like it, you can't die in story mode. It's not the real experience, but you technically can still you, you can play again. You play for the story, right? But if you want to actually beat the game, the, the pro like more the proper way, right? You can unlock you pay these little gems, and you can unlock. You can like portraits. You can get you can get uh, different uh, different cards. There's talents. You get, you, get your, you get your basic starting weapons. So, so the way you earn these little gems or uh, I think they call it fate shards. I think what they're technically called is you get just that pool that that pool there. Also, when you play the game, um, here I think I have a base. I have a character I went through a little bit. Let's just probably let's just, I'm, I'm, let's just abandon the run. I was just again, I was just doing a little daily here. Here, let's let's end this. Okay, so story mode gives you only gives you fifty percent. Oh, yeah, you also get the daily fate shard bonus of uh, times two. So I think so. Okay, so number of bosses you defeat. Uh, your. How much, I guess, how much damage. Although, again, so some of these, are, there's some scores, there's versatility, there's wealth. And there's, like, I think the layer of difficulty also gives you more, more or less uh, XP. And the daily doubles it. I think your number is divided by... Your, your, your number gets divided and you get that many of these little gems. So here I got seven. So, yeah, then you go and you... And you can spend them on stuff. 
And you, you, so I, my, my recommendation is this. Try out the different characters. Um, so from a Christian point of view, the Arcanist, it's basically like you're a sorcerer. As a Christian, I generally disagree with sorcery as a norm. I understand it's a fantasy world. I allow, I allow myself to have a little bit, but generally I look, I look, it's a, I look very negatively upon sorcery, right? So there's a lot of bad stuff that goes on there. Like the wizard, you got the warlock, you got the, the sorcerer. Again, you, you're messing around with stuff you shouldn't mess around with. Now, it's your life, you do what you want to do. I probably wouldn't recommend it, but you can go down these other classes that there are. Probably, maybe go through on story mode or just test them out. See what kind of a class you like or an idea you like. And fi find the class you want. Just save your gems for a little while. And then just pick one very specific route, and then just just try try to go down that tree. And with the daily with, with like with a little uh, the daily return return on the the fate shards, you'll probably be fine. Um. So yeah, yeah you can you can get you can get more upgrades, and then you can play the game and try try the game on normal. And there's also a challenging challenging. It's not dramatically different. I think the enemies get more HP, and you get a few less campfires. And maybe they get some upgrades to their, to their levels occasionally. It's not, like, dramatically harder. I mean, it is more challenging, obviously. So once you learn how to play the game, you can try it in challenging. But it's, it's not easy. Um, I don't know where it shows them at. Oh, there's, there's also a, oh yeah, there's also a library of all the, all the stuff you've seen. So I think either you take it. So there's the talents, there's also keywords. So you can read up on all the stuff. You can see all the cards you already have. You can think about what you want to unlock or uh, to unlock or lock. Again, those are personal decisions. So let's see here. So oh, I guess there's challenges you can go through. Um, and then and then also you can buy the DLCs. So there's the vanilla game. I recommend going through the vanilla game a few times. Uh, and see, see how far you can get. Or play through on story mode. There's also a story to the game. The DLCs are a, definitely a huge advantage. I, I, I would say I say definitely I definitely recommend them. They're super good. You get to pick. Yeah, it's basically like there's two separate full DLCs. They enhance the game dramatically and make the game significantly better. And I think that around August of this, uh, so this is July 2024. Supposedly, at some point by August or maybe a little bit September, they're gonna come out with like the biggest uh, expansion yet. I think I'm offline. That's probably why it's not gonna show it here. But it might be another full, brand new, major DLC with like some major overhauls or something. It'd be really good. I, I don't know exactly. It could be really good. So there's that. Okay, the DLCs. So here, so the DLCs lets you start the game. And you can, and you, you can, you can, there's a little bit of some customization. You can pick which route you want to go down. It's basically, you have the base game and you have two full additional variations of the game. They're, they're pretty much scales to the same. So you could pick one of three maps instead of the one map. So it, it adds a lot of flavor, a deeper story. Now I'm not going to go into the spoilers granted. Okay. But I'll, I'll just be honest like this. So there's two bosses in the game. There's the, the original final boss. It's the second final boss, and there's also, you know, a different. There's different. Um, no, it's it's strange that there's not three final bosses. Now maybe I'm just wrong, but I'm pretty sure there's just two final bosses. But but there's there's a whole bunch of new routes you can go down, which are definitely a great recommendation. So I mean, okay, so I'll just play. Okay, so when you start the game, you get to pick, you know, who you want to. What character you want to play, and if you give them these portraits, you can say maybe it's a little bit vain. But once you get enough, enough of that, they call it fate shards. Once you get enough of those fate shards, you know, if you want to pick up a, if you want to pick up a, a new portrait you like, you know, it, it's just not. It's, it's a nice thing. It's it's an extra advantage. So you get some of the starting weapons, and then you know, once you go down a tree a little bit more, 
Then also you have the ability to mix and match all the different all the different stuff you get to pick for each class, depending on whether you unlocked it or not. So you can come up with all sorts of crazy different builds. I think the War Fist is one of the later the late games. Um so yeah, here these are these are I think this is the one you get to start with. Yeah, I'll show, I'll show them all. Yeah, so you get to pick different... And so, like, I also probably would recommend, if you, if you want to be wise, that is, try, like, probably try the warrior or try the rogue. The rogue is kind of, like, more like a ranger. And, like, you know, the, the warrior is more like a fighter class. If you're looking for, like, the D&D point of view, right? So... Yeah, like, the, war, the warrior the warrior is pretty simple. And, like, and kind of, like, the ranger is pretty simple, too. And, and then they, they start out with like, you know, the mono red or the mono green. Yeah, and then there's all sorts of different stuff you can take. Yeah, I'll just, again, this is probably more of the barbarian build. Yeah, I'll let's see. Really, uh, sure. Well, we'll, we'll start with like, I'll show, I'll show off the barbarian a little bit. So, okay, so here's where you can select your next map. Presuming you buy the DLC, that is. There's also the vanilla game. So there's the three places, so I think you can you can randomize your maps, you can also have one that's be consistent, or you can just pick whichever one you want. So if you have the again, if you have the vanilla experience, and you and I also I think the DLCs add you a handful of extra cards. But it also costs some money. So I, I mean it's it's a pretty good investment. No, it's up to you to make your own decisions on how you spend your money, I think. I think it's like somewhere between like ten to twenty dollars. I think the game itself is like eight dollars. I mean, depending on like, you can buy all the DLCs at once to get them on sale. Maybe you don't. The game with all the DLCs and expansions or whatever. I mean, at most, it's probably going to cost you like thirty dollars. It's it's honestly a pretty good investment. I I, I think it depends on your situation, but I think it's pretty good pretty good deal. Here, I'll just go with the normal map. So there's a the story mode. So there's the normal, that's the default. And like, don't feel bad if you play in story, right? Again, like the story mode, again, you can just, there, there is, there is a, a, a like a canon based story and there are choices you can make. And then later on, I think you can get these uh, malig malignancies. You can add additional layers of difficult, oh, shoot. And you can add, you can add additional layers of difficulty. Here, let's just use the, let's just use the normal, let's just, let's just use the normal stuff. If I'm just going to show it, let, we'll, there's no reason I have to. Oh, well, you also can give your character a name. So I was kind of building some new characters for my little story. I'll, I'll try calling them Womaners. I mean, maybe you might see it in a different video at some point. I'll try, let's try Sir William. I'll put on normal. You also can get these banners. Okay, this is the default one. Oh, shoot. And sometimes it can be a little finicky with the controls, sometimes. It's not like that big of a deal. Okay, so I didn't. Okay, so we'll, we'll go on. We'll go on this road instead. It's not that big of a deal. So again, so this game is all. This game is a combination of a roguelike, or I think it's called like a rogue light or a roguelike, and also a deck builder. So you can go through and you can look at. And they have an in-depth story. I'm not going to spoil the story. I mean, if you want to go through and you want to read it yourself, or you want to try to find someone online or something, I think that's fine. I'm not gonna go through and go through the story. There, there is there is a pretty interesting story, and then I'm, I'm I'm not gonna spoil it though. So you always get some money. You have your uh. So I have I have some of the I have some of the extra stuff because I've gone down the road already, right? So like 
So I get I get a healing potion to start out with. He's all get a plus one bon he's all get a plus one bonus. Plus I get one removed, and I, I I get some extra bonuses, right? So it's just you know when you when you level up, you'll you'll, be, you'll get a little bit stronger. It makes your game a little bit easier the further along you want to get. But you also have to earn it, and it, it can be hard. So again, read your talents. You you get a talent. Sometimes they have passives that are active all the time. Sometimes you have to. Um, so this one you get a heart for every melee action in your deck. So you can activate your talent by pressing on the weapon. Okay, over here it shows your. And the, bo the bounties is the stuff you can. Um, but you can see your unlocks. You also can see the, the stuff you're trying to find. So if the game is semi randomized. So, okay, so you have campfire of a campsite. So, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Some of this stuff is subjective, but I'll give you advice that I, norm I, I myself normally do. So, you can heal for 20%, which, I mean, especially when you're playing the game early on, you're going to need it. But, it's usually not that big of a deal. You also can remove a card. So, normally what I do... So, I'll, I'll give some tips here. You can remove a block, which is probably the good idea. Also, you get to start out that special card, whichever special card you took. Now, all the special cards, as far as I can, as far as I know, exist within the game. But some of them are more advanced and trickier to find. Now, they, they become more rare. Like backswing is not a particularly very rare card. So normally you can and you can remove a block. They're kind of bad, to be honest. Most of your starting stuff's kind of bad. And then they have also have special story effects. So, like, here's a fresh grave. They have these little events you can click on one. So, this, this is the DLC. Um, you know, which I highly recommend you get. It just, it just makes your experience more fun. You have more options. So, there's a, I'm not, I'm not, you know, not going to spoil it here, you know, all the story. But this, is, this isn't the story. This is just an event. So, you can either open the grave, which causes the, the, the game world will get... The enemies will get, a, get to start with some bonus anger. They'll, they'll do more damage to you. And so if you open the grave, or you can leave it undisturbed and basically nothing's going to happen. So it's, again, there's, there's a little bit of some risk and reward. Doncaster has some high risks and some high rewards. So depending on, like, there's also certain moral choices. Like, if you're playing the rogue, you can, I think you can, like, rob graves. And if you're playing, like, a paladin, you can, like, you know, like, like a good Christian class, right? Like, you can perform a holy, a holy rite and you, know, you can respect and honor the dead, or, or there's, there's multiple choices. I think like the barbarian, or not the barbarian, we call it the the hunter. They have some souls effects where you can like gather souls for your special abilities or something. And some of these some of these map places have very specific things you can do with your class. So depending on what class you play, you might get a special something here. Let's just show it here. Okay, so when you open the grave. And though there's also more moral choices, I mean, I would say like there, there's a uh, there's a canon way of playing the game, and then there's also like you know the rogue light. So here you get you get you get a random you get a pseudo random decent card. Now it depends on what you're gonna. You, you don't necessarily know what you're gonna get, but there can be some very expensive, rare nice stuff. But in exchange. Since I disturbed the grave, now they're going to get one anger. Now, also, this is the early game. And there's also different types of enemies. So, there's like your normal enemy for a map, like this Crimson Grave Robber. He's like a normal tier. You see this abomination here. He is, his name is in blue. Meaning he's a stronger tiered enemy. And then every single map has a boss in it. And they also have a... Like a mini boss. And then some of them have special enemy bosses or special event. I think every single map has a special enemy in it. But some of the some, some of the enemies are, are optional. Sometimes you can't run into them, but sometimes you have to. Again, I'm not going to go through like deep spoilers or anything. So let's fight, let's fight a basic enemy. Again, I'm just try, I'm just testing out this tips and tricks idea. Again, now you you can you can either do what I say or you can not do it. Or you, I think I think also the idea of like you know it's even biblical, right? From like the Book of Proverbs, it's like let let the wise 
or like no it's like here i am you know speaking and preaching wisdom you know let those who are foolish come to me and gain wisdom let those who are wise come to me and increase your wisdom even further so the idea of wisdom maybe you already know half of this stuff maybe you learn something new or you can improve what you already have or you don't know and it can be very beneficial to learn more okay so let's talk about some of this other stuff here so right here it says strength there's two red dots that's how much and it says two red dots those are your energy you get an energy you get that much energy passively every turn is also in the deck you can also you can look at your deck here you can see what cards are currently in your draw pile and those are your your discard pile and then these are cards that get burned or like it's called buried so when they're buried they're gone for the rest of the game and the discard pile you can look through you also cannot see them as far as i can tell in order so you get to see that that these are hypothetically what you're going to draw but you're not guaranteed to know that they're actually going to draw those, those specific cards. Um, certain items are one use, like potions. I think all potions are one use. You get the Surge of Strengths, which is something you really... Again, like Surge of Strength, those are give you... Um, again, there's a zero cost to them. Gives you the energy, and it also gives you a small boon on top of which. I don't have any Surges, but... And you start with the basic attacks. You get these blocks. So when they hit you, they hit you straight to your health, or you have armor, and you mitigate some of your damage. So it's like it's all about risks and rewards. Now I'm an advanced player. Now this is kind of a, you know, I, I probably I could go straight through. Now I got this random card. Conjure three random basic attacks. And there's also different stats and different different names and different stuff. See what says valuable. There are different events that will pop up throughout the game. Now, mo uh, stuff like valuable stuff, it's again, it's worth it's worth good money. Or it's like there's like there's a guy called the collector. He wants valuable stuff, so if you give him something valuable, he'll give you. He's like, I think he can he pops up randomly kind of throughout. I think going from stage two and forward. So he'll give you a nice pool of uh, goodies for something that's. Uh, a treasure so it's like it's all about you know how much risk and how much reward so let's just go ahead and try it okay so you get and you get them randomized and then once you get you're going to have to learn how all these abilities work theoretically they're pretty simple but depending on the kind of build so this one has chain so if i play this ability here it'll hit him for damage and then then you get a chain here which will increase your next damage, and this one has flanking. So I think again, you, you can go through and read them, read their names or abilities. So this one, if you fire off on the side of the arm, like like off the right or the left, it will instead turn into an arrow, which will do extra extra damage. And this one gives you more armor based on how much damage you would deal. See, but you only but you only have two energy to start out with. So there's nothing more I can do. So I end my turn. And then they basically they, they take their turn. You can see they have little pips up pips up. They have little pips up there, right? That's their energy. And let's see here. Okay, so then certain enemies have certain uh, special abilities or or uh, or effects. This one's basically I think this one's called a coward. And there's also a lot of biblical virtues in it too. So, like cowardice and courage. You know, someone who's righteous, someone who's evil. So and this will give you another little more energy. And again, when you draw cards, well, then your, your your energy does not go away at the end of the turn; it will stay. However, there is special abilities and special effects in the game. So there's a there's an ability called int interrupt. Certain things can make you cause you to interrupt, and that can make you lose all your energy and like discard your cards or something. So. And all, all sorts of abilities stack, and you can remove your you can remove your other other people's abilities. This is a back and forth. So if he got away, he would have. Okay. So here is where you can. Okay, here's kind of where the game starts to kind of build up. So you saw the campfire site where you can remove cards 
periodically. You can either choose to heal, or you can remove cards. Or, so every single time when you beat an enemy, you get the ability to choose a reward. You also can just press this X button here, and just skip it. Which is sometimes is wise. And you, you're trying to build the deck. So, again, so there's different strategies. Here, we'll just take this, again, so there's, there's three different cards. Again, it's all about the risk and reward and how much how much do you want and how much do you not want. What I recommend you should do is build a deck that makes, that kind of works together and has kind of a similar theme. So, when you're building a deck, I mean, you, you want to have some kind of utility like that gives you draw, again, like there's cards that, and this is, this is true for most of these types of games. This is just, if you play Magic the Gathering, you're playing like, you know, some other kind of like deck builder. It's cards that let you, cards that let you uh, draw more cards, cards that give you more like resources and energy, and cards that give you, you know, free, free effects and free, you get like little freebies or goodies, extra stuff you get to have, or uh, cards that work really good well with other stuff. They can give, again, like, generally call like, synergy or special, you know, e extra goodies. That's the best way to build, like, kind of a deck. You want to have some kind of an idea of what kind of deck you want to build ahead of time. Or you can kind of see what you're going to get. So, like, a card like Blast Shield, it gives you armor, but also gives you some stagger. Again, the problem is, is that really synergetic? You can build, you can, you can build like, a good stuff deck. You can build a deck that's, uh... Yeah, you can build. You can generally. I recommend generally take two separate archetypes and then focus on those, and then maybe splash some utility effects. That's probably how you're going to build a stronger deck in this kind of a game. So, again, like this one, it's a one cost, so you get three armor, which you know again helps you to live. And like in in this game, you know, getting you, you also you have a life total. So when your HP reaches zero, you lose, and you have to start all the way over from again from the beginning, which is where this game becomes a rogue bike. So you play the game, you get halfway through, you fight a boss, or you make some bad decision, then you just die, right? And you gotta start all the way over from the beginning again. And you get some more fate shards, and then you learn. You have your knowledge. It's kind of like you know some souls mentality, and you try to upgrade, try to make a better build. You gotta learn how to. You gotta learn how to get good. And it can be very stressful. So, and this one gives you a crit, and it gives you some armor. This one you get to make a basic attack. This is the starting card for this deck. And haste, the next card you draw will cost one less. So this is where you get a freebie ability, right? Now, depending on the kind of basic attack you have, basic attack for this deck costs two. So, this is a one red that says you make a basic attack from your deck. It's just, it's just, it'll be, it won't be upgraded or anything. It'll just be like whatever basic you have to start out with. You play for one. You get to uh, play that card for, for basically for free for the one. The next card you draw will cost one less. But flanking only if you play it from the left or the right side of your hand. So we'll take the backswing. And there's also opportunities. Now, you never really know what you're going to get with an opportunity, but, so I don't know, I'm not sure what the exact numbers, it's probably like, it's probably around like 25% chance you might run into an enemy, and there's like another, like, there's a small chance you get, you can get like, um, as it says here, treasury traps or treachery awaits. So, you could run into an enemy. You could get this kind of a, like a little story event quest that you can like make a couple. It's all about making choices, and you also can run into some kind of a. You can run into story characters that will, might give you some kind of a benefit, and sometimes you just like you just get like a little pile of goodies, or you might get kind of screwed a little bit. Okay, we'll, we'll try one. See what happens. Also, when you activate your talent, depending on the kind of talent you have, you can activate it and then you can keep going through until you run into an enemy. So sometimes it's also wise to have it activated. Here, let's just let's try it out. So that gave me 7 HP. So it takes 4 turns to re, re, uh, rebuild up. That ability is pretty good though. Unless you heal. Let's see what happens. 
so I just got 17 gold. That's honestly a pretty freaking good. Also, they have these shrines. Let's click on one. Now, some of this stuff, because it's a fantasy game, it gets kind of shady. So I'll be real with somebody. I mean, I don't know the answers to these questions. But if you just look at it from like a mechanics point of view. So it's generally wise to investigate them. So then you, if you investigate, you can learn what it actually is supposed to say. So with this card, with this ability, you can either add a surge. So you pick all, you pick them. There's, there's the three energy colors or and then you can add that card to your deck, which is pretty good, especially early on. The ability to play energy, like being able to play, being able to play the game makes this very effective. Or you can take a card and upgrade it. You also get to pick. So if you want to build a multicolor deck, generally you want to play a multicolor uh, character class for that. But I mean, I highly recommend picking, you know, a surge of your own color. If you're, playing. I'm playing red, so I should play you know, like a red deck. All right, there's the campsite. And once you get more experience, you probably will learn that your best decision is to to um. Uh, uh, especially early, especially early on in the game, you want to remove stuff. You're trying to build up, you're trying to build your deck to become as strong as possible. You want to remove all the bad crap and add as much as much synergetic and strong stuff as you can. You know, to come up with a build. And there's also cards that let you transmute cards. You can, you can like basically you can get a, you can like you know, this, with a block for example, you can swap out a block with by paying some money, and you can hope to get a better version. It could, you could get an equipment or something. You can always, you can, you know, if you pick, um, there's higher rarity cards. You can usually tell by the color, but it'll be like when you, when you're selecting the, the option. And those cards t generally tend to be stronger than the, you know, common versions. And you can transmute them to hopefully get, a, a, you know, since you, you'll get, you get, you get, a it will upgrade the rarity of the thing you get to pick from. You can pick like one of three. And sometimes, depending on the ability, you can pick through like one of 20. For now, we'll scare a block. Yeah, and then you can try to get a better version of something you might want or need. Like this abomination, it's obviously much stronger than like the normal enemies. So if you feel like, if you feel ambitious, right, depending on kind of deck you have, you could try it. But it's, it's kind of subjective. And there's, there's a whole sorts. There's all sorts of abilities. There's cascade. There's ambush. You might have to go through and read them. So again, this this basic attack gives you uh, your opponent brittle, which is actually pretty strong. And so and there's also chaos and a little bit of some law. Yeah, this and the, when you when you use the potion, it also gets out of the deck. So and there's also. Again, I'm, I think I'm also going through most of the beginner stuff. There's also some intermediate tips. I probably gave some intermediate tips. Um, also, there are curses you can get. So, there's, there's more. There's moral choices, and there's like curses. So if like you see, like you see the little altar, right? You know some. Yeah, it's it's a fantasy world. As a Christian, there's some fantasy stuff. There's a list, like, say, like, there's an altar, and there's some money on the altar left to, like, in holiness, left, left the God, left, you know, there's an altar to God. You could take some money from that altar and be like, you know, I'm going to take this money for myself. Because it'd be convenient, right? You know, the game will say, oh, that's a naughty thing to do. We're going to give you, or I don't know, in terms of called a curse, I think it's called, like, a, but there is also, there's also ways to curse cards. But, that's a sin. You are greedy, so they give you a little card called greed, and they put that card in your deck, and it does like some negative effect. You're greedy, so they're trying to punish you. So you can go through to campfire, you can remove it. You also can attempt to transmute it. Um, there's also like negative cards in the game. It's kind of like there's, there's immoral cards, there's cards that cost you life. They, they come with a negative effect. But you can you can can transmit uh, those they call like a like a, a uh, yeah I heard the term called like malignancy I think it's called or they're malignant 
Basically, they're bad in the deck. Okay. So again, so here's an example of some cards you can pick. So Battle Cry, obviously for this kind of a deck, it's really good. You get a red energy and you get a rally for zero. It's basically a surge and it has a frenzy ability. So for the warrior, the warriors have frenzy. So if you take damage during your turn, your frenzy will trigger. So so I, I do one damage to myself. When I play Battle Cry, I'll get to draw a card when I play Battle Cry. So you can you can and they have like stuff like you can get anger, you can get special abilities, and you'll have to kind of look through them. Those are just like furies. And like headshot. Say I took that critical hit. I took the card that gives me the ability to have critical hits. So you can inflict, you get a, inflict a deep wound and you can just draw a card. And they're pretty cheap. So for now, let's go, let's go with good stuff. And early on, I recommend taking the good stuff. Also, again, since you're going to keep adding cards to the deck, eventually you want, probably want to get rid of your basic attacks. Now, there are strategies where you can add, you can use your basic attacks. It's just, the more crap you have in your deck, I'll say I'm just going to get rid of this. I just took a chance there. I mean, sometimes you get crap. It just, it is what it is, right? There's nothing you can do about it. Now, again, if you're playing, again, you can play a build where you run into a blacksmith, and you can upgrade all your basic attacks. Depending on the kind of basic attack you have, upgrading your basic attacks could be good. But, they also could be crap. So it depends on your, depends on your build, and it depends upon the type of, it depends on the card you get, right? Like, these ones inflict brittle, which is pretty strong. So... See here. And sometimes you can take damage due to things that aren't your fault. Like some enemies can have damage, you know, on your turn. You also can pay life. There's lots of ways to trigger like a frenzy. But okay, yeah. So this this one also makes me a basic attack. It was one, and it makes it gives me haste. So it's just better than the basic attack. Oh, another one. But yeah, that's the starting card. I mean, I'm surprised I found somebody the starting card. So again, like that one says stagger. So again, if you're building, again, you, you want to build a build, right? Let's just take the backswing again. I'm just kind of showing how this works. Okay, so I feel like, okay, also... Um, you have experience points, and you level up, and then when you level up, you get to pick a talent. There's like a permanent, uh, a permanent buff for your character. And you also have the ability to sort of re-roll your talents. I think you get a couple for free, and then depending on your uh, your character class. Like the rogue, I think, lets you like re-roll like up to five times when you go on the tree. The warrior, maybe it's only like three times. We're going to take on the abomination, but it's also much stronger than the regular enemies. So I think this one... I think this one might be there's a, this one might be the mini boss. Usually they're in red, but this is this is obviously the beginning area. Like these backswing, yeah, like they're much. And you got some haste. Now the next two cards we draw are gonna be cheap. So like this is unhit interrupt. So that would um. Also, yeah, like if you if we get a zero cost, for example. And it just, there's nothing you can do. A zero, a zero cost will, with the haste, will, will still be zero. Okay. Also, oh yeah, also, here, I'll just show this here. You do have a maximum uh, energy, I believe it's eight. So if you use it more, you won't get anything. So it, it, has, it has a limit. But here's the brittle. The brittle looks more, but the brittle, honestly, pretty strong. Okay, so, and some, 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 at a certain point, you're gonna you're gonna run into making choices of what kind of cards you want to take. Also, you can just say no. So, here's a card. Uh, oh, there's also charges. Once once a char once a card runs out of charges. 
it uh, gets buried. So it'll be gone for the rest of the, uh, the, the, the match, or like the round. And then ne next time you go into another combat, it'll be back again. So this one says... So you, you can convert cost to blood. Basically, you pay the life instead of the cost of the energy. Which also helps you to trigger your frenzy, but also it hurts you. You slowly kill yourself, in a sense. So, you gotta be careful. There's also stances you can go into. Gives you special abilities. Um, and also, you can just be like, no, I'm good. I don't, I don't really want these cards. Because sometimes, you know, it's like you run into abilities like, you know, a st stone shape. You don't really have a way of giving your opponent armor. Or you don't have a way of giving them uh, stagger. It's like, I don't really have any way, I don't have any crit cards in the deck currently. Oh, this card's, this card's pretty good. I also see how it's like lit up in yellow. So, that's more of like a, I think it's like a rare. It's a little bit more higher rarity. And when cards get higher rarity, they also can be upgraded. Not, not, but not all cards can be upgraded. Only cards that have special, other cards that say they can be upgraded, um, or have stuff like damage modifiers, you can't, you cannot upgrade every card. There's some cards you just can't upgrade. So here, it cost me one. Oh, well, yeah, it's also the luck of the draw. And also, there is wisdom to just skipping to not do something sometimes. Because you get to save your energy, unless they can interrupt you. So it's like, here, let's, so I skip the turn, I'm like, no, I'm just not going to play anything. And then there's also, also there's other reasons why you might, you might just not want to do something. Whatever, whatever the reasons might be. You get to save your energy, plus you'll get the two more passive energy. Like the poison, the poison counteracts your healing. It reverses it. And you can have a nice fat pool of energy for next turn. Okay, so here's a level up. Now there is an unlimited number of level ups, but they get harder to get experience-wise. I think usually you never really get more than seven. So depending if you want to if you can if you go through all the maps and you go through every single enemy. You get more chances for more cards to take to, for uh, to pick up for your deck. And you get more chances for more uh, more experience points to level up. Also, also you get money. So every time you win in a fight, you get like a small percentage of money. I'm not sure if it's like uh, static based or you get. It might be based upon like you know how hard the enemy was or something. So different stages will give you different amounts of money. You can also get rerolls. So it's like you, you can go through and you can you can think about whichever ones you want. Dang it, it's it's subjective and to some extent, but it's all about the risk versus all about the reward. It's like you know, life is a resource. And you you also usually don't passively heal, so you have to find sources that will heal you. So like this is a this is like this is a vanilla gain twenty maximum health. To be honest with somebody, that's pretty good. This one says, upgrade all melee actions and melee basic attacks equal to your strength. You also can just go through and look through your deck. Well, those four cards all got a plus one bonus. Currently, that really... Again, that, that's probably far better uh, later on. And then this one's like, to the undead and demons. Some of this stuff, you might not run into these enemies half of the game. Now, if you're playing in the vanilla game, or even when you get to, like, this is a really good card for late game, but it probably doesn't get to do a whole lot. So this, this ability will work for the boss of this map. I think it's because it's undead. But, so yeah, um, Headhunter. If you're playing, again, this is, some, some of these are more, I mean, I'm probably offering more beginner tips and more intermediate tips, depending on who, who you are where, at this point, if you're listening to it. Uh, the advanced tips are probably they are a little bit more complicated. Headhunter, I think I, I personally think is a really good perk. So every time you beat a boss, especially if you get it early on, so I haven't fought this boss yet, and you you, you, get, you get a full heal. So I don't normally you wouldn't you don't, normally you don't get passive healing, and you get fifty pieces of gold. So let's go with that. But like never mock a vanilla strategy. Like you know, getting the twenty extra health is pretty good. So I think because I leveled, um, I might, I might, that might just be because I went, uh, I still I beat the stage. So 
Again, it's all about trying to pick a pick a build. The Swift Strike is a zero cost. That uh, if you when you swap when you swap out a stance, you get it back to your hand, so you can keep using it multiple times. It's free. If you have special, you know, extra abilities, there's like ammo. Once you're playing an ammo deck, it doesn't do anything. But it is it is a rare, so you could transmit that for potentially a better version of a card. So if you think about it, right? And that one does damage, it costs one, and you can get a free me oh, melee. We'll, we'll try that. And then you also can activate your your, you know, your talent. And don't forget you have that talent. Sure, we're gonna... We'll, we'll go through it. Okay, so... <laughs> there, There's also, again, like, you can... In, in this area... And you never know what you're gonna get. You get like artifacts and stuff. So honestly, opening these graves up gives you pretty good stuff. Okay, so this card is cursed. So here's the thing about cursed cards: you can't get rid of them. As far as I know, I don't think there's anything in the game that gets rid of cursed cards. Um, there might be a way to um, get rid of a cursed, but it's not easy. And maybe maybe later on in the game, there's there's a special abilities. But okay, so that converts to now. It's gonna cost me four life, or I think it's like it seems like one life or two life per en energy cost. It's so now sweeping strikes as the frenzy activated. And since it's random, it's random for zero. Okay, so. Can't be, can't be transmitted or removed from your deck. Again, it could be a consequence. It also could be really good. So, this is a more of an advanced idea. Now, I, again, I couldn't control it. I, I, th I thought I would just test it out. Just to... no, I was just going to show some of the hypothetical moral choices. So again, like, you, 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 you can go through and you can build the deck. And also, I would say, you know, make choices, and you're, you know, you're going to fail. And you're, you're also going to lose, and you're going you're gonna to lose. I mean, that's just reality. You lose all the time. But you got to learn from those choices, and you got to make a better strategy. you got to take risks, and sometimes those risks will uh, make you lose. So Sunder Armor removes all of their armor, and it gives them a negative effect. Let's we'll, we'll try that. So we're not quite to the boss yet. Um, so yeah, like, it's all about, it's all about the risks and all about the rewards. Let's see here. Okay, so I think it costs one life per, per the blood. Since it's random, you never know what you're going to get. So... Okay, so again, if you're trying to build a deck, like a Siphoning Strike, for example. So you have to have Frenzy activated. I don't have that many cards currently in the deck that lets me do damage to myself. I do have that one. You get to heal yourself for 10. It also just does 6 for 2. Okay. There's no an event, right? Like a, little, like a Holy Cross. So... Again, every single enemy is going to get more... I'm kind of going on this road. So I made a bunch of money. But it also pissed off, uh, you know, the graveyard, right? Because you, you're messing with graves. It's kind of a naughty thing to do. Now, obviously, as a Christian, you should probably go on the other road. But I'm just showing off. Showing how the game works. So this is the first boss. So now it gets to start out with three... It does three extra damage to you for every one of its attacks. Which makes it considerably stronger. But this is also just the early game. And there are ways to get rid of your opponent's stuff. Like, you can dispel their effects. Or well, they can do it to you also. So this one... Uh, and some abilities I don't think you can get rid of. So they take 10% more. Which is quite good. And, okay, let's see here. They have some brittle on them already. 
and, you, and all your abilities will start stacking up. Like rally gives you more HP, and then it slowly starts taking them down, so it gets some extra HP out of it. And also, again, you, you got to play the hand you're given. Like you got this puzzle box. Um, so it costs four colorless. So what you can do is. I probably shouldn't even go through it, but like, say I had this zero cost card, right? I could play the puzzle box. I mean, the puzzle box not a puzzle box costs zero, and the black for blood costs four. Now I play the puzzle box a second time. Now it costs zero, and I'm gonna swap it out with a four drop, a four cost card. Now the four cost card costs zero, and the puzzle box costs four. So, what you can do is you can rearrange your abilities with that, and you can get some special advantages. So, depending on the kind of cards you want to play, right? Yeah, not that I paid 2 life, but I gained 10. So, that's a pretty good deal. And yeah, this, this vulnerable is not going to go away. And there's just different abilities. So, yeah, it's all about the risk and all about the reward. But, I mean, I've already taken almost, you know, a third of my life. You do got to be kind of careful. And then they can have armor too. Let's just keep, keep beating them down. I mean, the, the early stages of the game are pretty easy to be honest, like... But the, the game will get considerably more difficult. Alright, uh... So yeah, he gets some armor. I don't have that many frenzy. Yeah, they're, they're inflict he's inflicting the vulnerable. All right, so we killed him. Okay. So you can pick a reward. And again, sometimes you can get some, uh, you can get some really cool abilities, but and you, you've got to be careful of You know, you, you, got, you got to think about your deck, right? Now you could take every single card you run into that might be a bad decision. Now, interrupt is a good ability. This is a, this is a pretty strong. Your maximum health, and this is a pretty strong card. So it has interrupt, so removes all their energy. If they had channeling, that will shut that down. It replaces their deadly with regular. It's it's just really good. And then, again, there's all, there's all sorts of choices you can get. Oh, yeah, see this, pool, see this little, uh, there's how much money we have. So, you can immediately leave, or you can, if you, if you haven't gone through all the areas, you can go through the other areas, or you can leave, and depending on how many other areas you have, you have to go refine the leave area. So, you know, you gotta think about it. So, again, there's obviously the story... I'm just going to skip the story. So there's the inn. Um, and you can pay gold to heal yourself. I mean, depending on how, what stage you are in the game, you probably will need that. Uh, there's the blacksmith. So also when you... Okay, okay here's, another, here's another trick, right? You can also um, return to menu. And click continue again. And the game offers you a very small amount of mercy. So, now if you click on the blacksmith, you go through him, and you, then you leave. You restart the game, you re reboot it back up again, it'll be, it'll be back to where you were at. But, if you click on something, and same thing with an enemy. If you fight an enemy, and presuming you're not dead, you can boot out, you can reboot the game, and you can go back to the stage where you can pick the enemies you would choose from. So you're not you're not 100% screwed for your specific choice, but it's a very small amount of mercy. So you can upgrade a card, you can remove a basic attack, or you can upgrade all your basic attacks. So you also can just leave. And here's a story story person. And I'm just I'm not gonna go through it. I don't need to spoil it. So, you can buy a potion, they're one-time use. Obviously, you know, it's a really good idea to buy the potions 
early on when you're not sure how to play the game because they give you some healing. You can pay 20 gold, swap out a card from like your deck, you can choose from a new one, or you can pay 35 and you get one from a higher rarity. Now, I usually like to do this one because you know, I'm trying to play an optimized, you know, long term build. So, so. With the campfires, you'll be able to remove your basic attacks. You really don't need to upgrade the basic. You don't need to swap out the basics. Let's just try it on a backswing and see what I get. No, I think I'm, I'm not, probably not going to make this video. Oh, it's already almost an hour. But So Break Bonds is pretty darn good, to be honest. It's re the card, it has always been called Reliable. Reliable is crazy good. So if you had slow or you had stunned, you can play a card with, with reliable even if you are stunned. Normally you can't do that. You also, by the way, if you transmute a card, you have to pick a card. You can't just skip it. So again, like certain builds, you get you get stagger. So you can take some you could take less damage initially, and you slow and in stagger, you take half of your damage and stagger. Allowing you to minimize some of your damage uh, for a while, but you still you take it over the long term. Let's just um actually let's just take the break bonds. This is a really good card, but it's also yeah it's also kind of shady a little bit too. So you can I think you also can come through here as many times as you want, and sometimes people might be in here depending on what you do. But if you're playing like a power game build, oh yeah, so you can heal depending on the talent you have. You you can keep a talent active. And then you can leave and you can go more places and theoretically you might be able to have the talent activated twice. And since these are the DLCs, this is the normal one. But you can pick which one you want to go down. Now, I'm probably not going to make this too much longer. I'm going to end this here. But... So I think hopefully this is a little bit of a beginner guide to the game. And I, I put in a handful of some intermediate tips. I probably put a couple advanced tips in. So yeah, it's also some. It's also I'd say it's semi-randomized, but that's the that's the mini boss. Pretty hard to beat. I think it also gets in a range enraged. Yeah, so it gets gets a little bit extra buff. And there's also again there's random events that you can get. Okay, so here here's the merchant. Let's talk about that for a second. So obviously, you know, there's different choices. So again, also here's the thing. This is a roguelike, or I can call it a roguelite or roguelike. So make a choice. If you make a specific story quests or specific choices you can make, you know, get like a little notebook and like write them down and see like, we'll see what choices you would get. You will in exchange get a reward based upon what you see, what happens. So you check the man's boots. Uh, you, get, you, get, you, can, you get some money or something, right? And he's mad that you tried to rob him. So he won't he won't open up his merchant shop to you right now. Or I think, in, so you leave him tied up. I think it's just kind of, you can kind of skip it. And so, some of these are about the story. If you're playing on a story, right? Or start cutting the ropes. You're you're basically being like a good person, and this game does reward being good. Now the merchants are recruited, and you get to have access to buying something. So, and here's and you got all this pool of money. You can spend your money on stuff. Um. Usually, the game will rec again. The game will give you a pool of. So you get what you get nine cards, right? Also, I think you can boot out from being in the merchant. But I don't think it re it shows the cards you initially got. You can look at that. Also, you can click refresh stock. So that equals your your pool of your uh, your sun your sun gems. So I think you use like one or two, depending on how many times you keep trying to do it. But there's also cards called enchantments. So an enchantment you can only have one of each enchantment currently active. So if I have Body of Steel, don't I wouldn't say never pick, never get more than one of the same enchantment. But they're a permanent, 
for that specific battle, and the next battle, the, the, it's a card in your deck again. But you can get some cards that give you the uh, the enchantment to be uh, permanently binded to you, uh, so you start you start out with it. But and there's like red green, there's like red blue. And the game will the game will give you a semi randomized pool of cards. You, you know, or maybe I would say probably I would probably would say it's just randomized. You never know what you're gonna get. But it's, usually it's based off of your color. So like I'm playing red, right? So it's gonna offer me red. And there's different costs. You also can buy any number of cards on here, depending if you have the if if you have the money. Oh, also if you buy a card during your first uh, screen, it won't let you click refresh. So you have to buy cards from either that screen or the other screen. You also can just choose to click the X button. You can just skip it too. Now, Battle Vigor here, this card is crazy good, right? So it lets you draw extra card and you take an extra damage every turn. It also will keep your uh, your frenzy triggered. Yeah, so, and like you got opportunities. You, you never know what you're fully gonna get. And there's cards that let you get. You, you gotta, you got what I recommend is yeah, get, get like a little, little notebook and write down some of the write down the choices that you would make and the consequences for those choices so that you can or, you know, or, or record your screen or whatever you do, right? Keep a little pool, a tallied pool of some of the choices. Now, like this one, for example, this is, I don't, I'm, not, I'm sure, I'm not sure if I've ever seen this one. Like, I've never even seen that event. <laughs> Like there are, you know, there are events that uh, what does this say? Shuffle four fury cards into your discard pile of rampage. Holy crap! I've seen this. I've seen the other series of this event, but I've never seen this one. There are events that are kind of rare. Or you can be like, hey, why don't you have this axe? Or I'm like, no, I'm gonna keep it. And you got your money, and then all the stuff you see for the screen here. If, say that you have the alchemist, right? I'm gonna go to another opportunity. She gets some more money. She'll be back again somewhere in this pool. Now the pool will get uh, shuffled up. I believe the boss is usually pushed. They have like some kind of a randomized. Now the boss will be pushed way back. But eventually, the more stuff you take, the more odds, more odds that you get access to find the boss. And then like there's the, the mini boss you're gonna run into immediately. And there's different events, and usually, again, I think also, I think also, in order to get to the boss, you have to go through all the events. So yeah, those two, the boss, the boss is like, the boss is hid behind the events. So once you reach all the events, then the boss will be act. Depending on what kind of enemies, or again, like I, I would recommend reading the names and learning how some of the effects work. So this one says binding, right? Also, you can click on a card depending on um, depending on what's gonna do, right? So let's just test it out here. Let's just see what. Oh, there, oh, here it is. So, so this one says adds persistence. So normally, when you play your hand of cards, at the end of the turn, you discard all your cards. A card with persistent will stay in your hand. Also, if you would attempt to bury a card with persistent, it will still stay. It'll still stay in your deck that round so if you fire cast a card with persistent it'll still stay which is really good now you have to think about what would be good like honestly like this this rip break bonds is crazy good with persistence you also do have a hand limit also your maximum hand size you also have uh fatigue so you get uh fatigue resistance so Every time you sh you draw your hand, you you reshuffle your deck and you draw a new. So like you play your hand, cards go to your graveyard. Next turn you draw more cards. You play them. You go to the graveyard. Then you draw again and you run out of cards. Um, so you would add more cards from your discard pile back to your deck. You shuffle and you draw again. You take a you gain a fatigue, and then after you gain at, after X amount of fatigue, you start taking. I think you take like X amount of damage per fatigue. I'm not actually fully certain what it is, but so you can only go through your deck so many times without being slowly punished for that specific round. 
So you gotta play a little bit smart. It's also not that big of a deal. It depends on your point of view. But okay. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna end this here. This is kinda like a this is a, this is a beginner. This is a beginner kind of video, like little tips and tricks on how to play the game or how to play the game a little bit better. Or maybe maybe you learned something. Or maybe you didn't. I don't know. But yeah, th thanks for watching. You know, let me know in the comment section if you um if you have any other kind of tips that you'd recommend, or if you learned something, or maybe you think I got something wrong, or or whatever you might want to think. Yeah, so if you like I want to play the gameplay, I mean again, it's 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 subjective, but you might get some wisdom. And there's tons and tons of stuff you can do. The game is a little bit addictive at times. It's there's so much stuff in it. But I I say I recommend take a break every once in a while. Alright, uh thanks for watching. God is good.